So here we are in the magic forest, and uh, this is an empty hive that I had set up with some frames in it, just in case these bees swarmed in the summer. Maybe they just go live there, but they didn't. But last week when I put on the old uh, bee escape to get rid of all the bees from the honey there, there just weren't that many bees uh, down below. Usually I saw, like this was usually pretty crowded down here. And it wasn't that crowded. I mean, not crowded, but, you know, there's always a good number of bees. And there wasn't that many bees left when I put this skateboard on. And now I'm looking, and I'm, there still aren't that many bees. Like, shouldn't all these bees be down here looking kind of crowded? I don't like that. Ugh. These are the first two boxes of honey that I just pulled from my hive. You can see the, the bees following bee space, creating a filling in every gap to make honeycomb. And these little gaps are about the width of a bee. Some people call it bee space. And uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that was eight frames in a 10 frame box. That's why the frames are a bit wonky because they're just filling in all that extra space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, and this one is nine, and they, they made it a little bit thicker, but the one with eight, I think it's even thicker. Last weekend, I put on this escape board right here over the brood chamber, which is three medium supers. And I just took out the top two boxes, and now you can see there's, there's, a, there's the stray bee still in there, but they're, all the bees are basically removed from the honey. Whew. Okay. So those are the uh, five honey supers, and they're all full of honey, all capped honey. So, done. Now, what we have here, I see those bees, those are a little bit disturbed, so I don't want to get too close to them because I don't even have a veil on right now, but I'm going to pop open this baby, and you can see all the bees down there. They're in the honey supers and they crowded down. Now they're all packed into these three boxes. <laughs> and I'm gonna put on my bee jacket. Put, put that uh, inner cover back on. And then top them up with a little bit of syrup just in case. And uh, believe, believe it or not, that's it for the winter. This whole brood chamber is just packed with honey. Uh, as far as I can tell but I will give them syrup and I'll feed them just a little bit of syrup this week. Then I'll check them next week. Okay, so all those bees are in, indeed packed into this hive. You can see that's a lot of bees. That's perfect going into winter. You want to see this many bees, just loads and loads of bees. I gotta get them out of the way. And in a situation like this, smoke isn't that bad because I gotta put that inner cover back on. And look, they're just practically pouring out of the hive. There's so many bees in there. And I don't want to squish any bees. So a liberal use of a bit of smoke in this situation isn't that bad. Ooh. But they're actually, it's funny, they, these bees are pretty, they're really calm. I was expecting uh, slightly more defensive bees, but they're pretty chilled out, man. And I'll tell you why they're chilled out. Because they got a queen in there. This is, I think that's why they're they're usually chilled out when they've got a queen and they've got everything that makes them happy which is the, a laying queen and usually a bit of brood and stuff to do busy bees are happy bees and calm bees <clears throat> so I could shake these bees off and just shake them in front of the uh, the hive but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to let them crawl in but you gotta give them a little, make sure they've got a ladder or something they can crawl into. So I'm just gonna use this piece of wood. Dee -dee -dee. There. Uh, let's just check, see if the queen is here. The, it's possible the queen can be in the top of the hive, where the honey is. She usually isn't, but it happens. It happened to me a little while ago. So I'm just checking, and those are nice young bees too. This looks, they're really nice. These are fairly new. These these aren't old bees at all. They they 
they're probably uh, these bees may have never really ever been outdoors. So anyway, they'll find their way in. One one of these bees will start finding their way in, and they'll start scenting, and then they'll all just go inside. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. And here is the uh, the top. Not too many bees got squished, which is good. I wasn't planning to record this. I just got this with my cell phone going here. So this is just the, the top feeder. And I'm just using an old CD to block the inner cover hole. I didn't use any top ventilation this summer, and it worked out really well. Okay. So there's the bees down there. And now I'm going to fill that up with syrup. And they'll have a little bit of something just to top them up in case they're low on syrup. And here's the syrup. Nice and thick. As thick as I can make it. All right, there's some nice thick syrup in that feeder. And sometimes the bees are kind of slow to notice that there's syrup there. So what you do is you just bloop, drip a little bit down, down the hole, and they'll find it. And they'll say, hey, where's that sweet stuff coming from? And they'll walk right up and then they'll start sucking down that syrup. So uh, I'll come by in a few days. This hive isn't next to my house, so I, gotta, I, can't, I don't check on it every day. I'll come by in a few days, see if they're sucking down that syrup, and if they are, I'll give them more, and if they're not, I won't. The trick with feeding them this late in the year is if they don't have enough time, because they're just basically going to treat this like really thick nectar, so they're going to cure it like they would nectar and make honey out of it. So they need time to do that, and if it gets cold, uh, what happens is they'll suck down that syrup, but they won't have time to cure it and to cap it like they would with normal uh, nectar. So you end up with syrup that's open inside the frame all winter and it can get moldy and it's not great. It's not the end of the world, but it's not great. Um, so it's something to be avoided if possible. I got a wasp, this is a wasp buzzing around me. I'm gonna smoke myself here. So the queen is still laying, they're, they're, this hive I know is full of brood. Last time I checked last week, there was three or four frames of cat brood right up top so there were she's still those are the, the winter bees i think they're good as long as that queen is okay they're in really fantastic shape well here's a here's a wasp and a bee i'm gonna fight to the death there you also don't want to well i you can do whatever you want but this is what i do i try not to give them more syrup than they need. I used to feed them syrup in the fall when I first started out in 2010. Uh, I would just feed them, well if you're building up nukes you just feed them all you, all you can, but once they're established I used to feed them just until they stopped taking the syrup in the fall. I gave up on that because I noticed first of all that my bees weren't capping their syrup before the, the winter and I was getting a lot of that moldy syrup that, uh, in open frames that moldy open comb, which wasn't cool. And the other thing is, if you give them too much syrup late into the fall, they'll just hoard it all. If it's warm enough for them to take down that syrup, they'll just fill every cell with syrup. If she already has enough winter bees produced, it's not the end of the world if she doesn't have any place to lay. But the other thing is, if, they, if you get rid of all those empty cells and fill them up with syrup, the bees don't have anywhere to cluster. The bees go into those empty cells to stay warm and to produce heat. They stick their butts into those empty cells and they do some little physiological magic to create some heat that stays inside that comb and is generated through the comb. And if you don't have that empty space, they can't do it. They can't cluster as well as they would. The queen can't stay as warm as well as she, she would without that kind of clustering. So you don't want to just fill them to the brim. I usually leave enough honey for the bees to get through the the winter and in my case with a three medium brood chamber this top box is full of honey um, and this here is probably half full of honey and there's still probably even a little bit of honey down there for me even that like just that one medium i'm content with that if they fill that then they've probably filled the bottom of two as well so 
And uh, yeah, so that's, that's how I roll. Everybody does something a little bit different. And there's room for everybody to do everything a little bit different. That's how I do it. Again, this is just from trial and error and lots of experimentation. And some, a fair number of catastrophic mistakes. Uh, not too many in recent years, which is good. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where I've arrived. Uh, the bees need, I don't know why they're not crawling in. These are, these are young bees that have not been, they, they're clueless. They just don't know how to get in. They don't know what they're doing now. They, they don't know how to get inside. So I might have to just shake them in. Um, anyway, uh, what else can I tell you about this situation? Uh, pollen. The bees also need pollen going into the fall. Sometimes you need to top them up with a pollen supplement or pollen patties. Uh, they use that pollen to create royal jelly to stimulate the queen to lay more brood, more winter bees, because winter bees are slightly different than summer bees and all this sort of stuff. So they need pollen going into the winter and going into the fall. But for me, the goldenrod provides enough pollen that I don't need to top them up. But that's only for established colonies. If I have a nuke or smaller colonies, or they're on the small edge of things. Those smaller colonies don't always have the workforce, the foragers, to bring in all the pollen and resources that they need to build themselves up into a strong colony going into winter. So if it's small, yeah, go ahead. I would, I would give them all the help they can get. You know, give them syrup, give them pollen patties, pollen sub, whatever you can just to help them out. So yeah, a little bit of pollen and giving them a little bit of pollen as soon as they're done with honey basically or even before that like even for the past few weeks would have been a good time to give them pollen sub if there was a, a small colony that didn't have again didn't have the worker force to just you know build themselves up strong into the winter and a lot of I ain't gonna lie to you <laughs> a lot of nukes that I've seen uh, around here are not strong they, they just didn't have enough bees a lot of them don't have enough fruit and, and not enough foragers starting right out of the gate and they just never build up as strong as they should. So really, yeah, if I had nukes, I would be probably just feeding my bees syrup and pollen all summer long and into the fall. Uh, just give them every bit of help you can get because some of these nukes that I've seen around are not that strong. They really, they really need to be, you really need more brood, you need more foragers right out of the gate. Especially for nukes on the colder part of the island, close to the ocean sort of on the Avalon, in the places where it's really cold. So, anyway, that's it. That's, uh, that's just me talking off the top of my head. Uh, so, I've got this feeder full of syrup. They probably haven't dug into it yet, but maybe they have. No, they haven't. And they may not dig into that at all. They might have everything they need, and they may not have any interest in touching that syrup. It happens. So, what I need to do, this is an empty hive with empty frames. Da, da, da. And I just had this hive set up with these old drawn comb in them. And so that the bees swarmed, they'd swarm into that hive. Anyway, uh, this is just an empty super to cover up that feeder. And here's the top. I've got a big piece of hard insulation right here that goes over the, over the inner cover. Stays there all winter. And it stays there all summer. And it worked out really well for me this year. And here we go. There's our friends, the big ugly slugs. They just get in everywhere. It's been a really bad, last winter and the summer were really bad for that. I will return this. When I'm done feeding the bees, I'll put that back on top. These bees will go into winter without any wrap. Nothing other than that, other than that bottom entrance wide open with a with some mesh over it to keep critters out. It's pretty much done for this for now. I might put a little bit of uh, silver bubble wrap around it later. This is a windbreak. I don't think that stuff provides much insulation, if any, but it works as a windbreak. And my bees in this location, they get they get they get all year round. They get a nice hit of sun like they are right now. So the sun warms them up, and they've got all these trees for shelter. Blocks the wind. Let's put out this smoker. Handy dandy smoker. I've gotten into just putting a cork in the top of my smoker to put it out. But you can also just do this. 
which is what I just did because I don't have a corker at the moment. Okay, so these bees. Okay, now they're just starting now to figure out the way home. See that? They're very slow to go though. Um, but sometimes you can just shake them. And when you shake them, they naturally start to scent. And then once they scent, oh, they all come rushing in. So I'm going to shake them. And then I'm going to run. Whoop, 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 whoop. They're definitely defensive though. Here we go. And there they go. Right now they have a top entrance, but I'm going to block that up uh, soon. Uh, they should have enough honey, enough bees. Lots of bees really helps. Lots of honey helps too. Every frame in that top box was packed with bees. I don't think that's ever a bad thing. And here's the skateboard that I just shook all the bees from. And there's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six that didn't get shook. So there's a few stragglers in my car. Get them out of here. All right, that's it. Let's go extract some honey. Oh, here we go. There's a few bees buzzing down there, but most of them are gone. So this is the inside of my extractor. I extracted some honey a couple months ago, and there's still some debris and a little bit of honey still left in the bottom. And uh, it doesn't smell bad. It's totally it's stainless steel. It's totally clean. And I know uh, a lot of commercial beekeepers who clean their extractor only once a year. But I'm going to uh, give it a cleaning with a pressure washer just to be on the safe side. So before I clean out this extractor, I'm just gonna leave it out in the sun and let uh, the bees clean it up first, get some uh, honey out of it and whatever they can get out of it. Sometimes they clean it up until there's not a speck of anything left. It's just nothing but dry, crumbly bits of wax left in the extractor when they're done. So I'll leave that for them for a couple hours while I take a break and have some lunch. Mm -hmm. 